guys, Desolate Magic Air. It's time for more spoilers. I might get through all of them. I legitimately don't know how many there are left, but they're already live on Arena, so we're going to hit the go button. I just took a vitamin B complex pill, and it's hitting hard. Let's do it. First, we got Codex de Jota and some crap in French. You know what? I'm going to edit all these out. Here we go. Snap. Oh, look, it's in English now. So, five drop, uh, artifact, domain, pay five, tap it, draw a card, and it costs one less to activate for each basic land type among lands you control. Still costs five to get out, though, but that's still pretty spicy. Definitely a Jota card. And by the way, that gilding do be looking fabulous. Or Jota did an oil change and didn't wash his hands and then the book and, yeah. Next up, Sten, Paranoid Partisan. Okay, you're not paranoid if, like, people's heads are splitting open and robot crap's coming out, okay, then... Pretty much whatever you believe at that point, conspiracy-wise, is probably pretty legit. So it's one blue, one white, two two legendary creature, human wizard, and a Sten Paranoid Partisan enters the battlefield, choose a card, a uh, uh, card type, pardon me, other than a creature or a land. Spells of the chosen type cost one less to cast. Okay, that's kind of neat. Could be auras, that'd be pretty fun. I mean, I don't know why you choose auras instead of enchantment. In fact, that's not even within the rules, but uh, also, if you pay three, one of each color plus generic hair, uh, exile this card and return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Oh, so he just teleports away if there's danger. Smart boy. Next up, Hadi Jin. Let's see if this one's as crap as the last one. I mean, it's already four toughness for three double blue, and it's a rare. It can't be that bad. Uh, flying, and its power is equal to the number of incident sorcery cards in your graveyard. Okay. Incident sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. Holy crap, this is like the, the most playable, powerful gin they've ever printed. I'm not going to check on that, I'm just going to say it. Next up, wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. That's not a card, that's not a card at all, that's a shirt. And you know why? Because Labor Day sale, 20 to 95% off on into the AM, oh my gosh. You have got four days, 15 hours, two minutes, and 14 seconds as of the time I just said this, so in other words, probably this minus two hours, to go check out this crazy sale. Let me give you a sneak peek. Oh my gosh, does that say best sellers 20 to 95% off? Yes, it does. Look at these prices. $7.95, they've lost their minds. Look at that, that could be you right there. That could be you. $11.95. Holy crap. And this is not a small sale, by the way. This is like page one. There's like, there's three pages. Let me just show you some. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You get this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. All of it for sixty-five seventy. You might be saying, but yes, that cannot possibly be right. That cannot possibly be the real number. And you are correct. If you believe this, you're a crazy person. Why would you possibly think that that was accurate? The real number is 5916 if you use code Death Threats. That's right. 10% off even to sale items. Go check it out. Link in the description. Let's go. Check them on the link below. Back to the spoilers. We got Defiler of Flesh. Oh, he's going to have a hard time wearing a t-shirt. I'm sorry, Phyrexians. The sale does not apply to you. Anyway, it's a double black uh, four cost, four, four, Phyrexian Horror with Menace. Ooh. And as an additional cost to cast black permanent spells, you may pay two life. Oh, we're finally seeing the black one from the cycle. This looks pretty good. And uh, those spells cost one black less to cast if you paid life this way. This effect reduces only the amount of black mana you pay. Not generic. To me, that's phrased incorrectly. It says... Amount of black mana you pay, not amount of black mana in the cost. You can pay black mana for generic, so the way they phrase it is just completely incorrect. Anyway, also, whenever you cast a black permanent spell, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one against menace until end of turn. Ooh, this guy's just gonna hit. Holy crap, this is a good card. I don't think it crosses the line at all, but it's really good. Next up, Juniper Order Root Weaver. It's a two cost white, two two human druid with kicker one green. And when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, put a one one counter on target creature you control. Now, see, my number one deck right now, and my number two deck actually, are green white. And I just wouldn't run this. Enchantments are still too powerful. I took a quick peek on Arena and just trimmed my deck down a little bit, and it's playable. And I just absolutely crushed someone with it. There weren't many additions from Dominaria, actually, which was kind of funny. I threw um, a Johnny in there because I thought it was funny. Oh, then that overpowered his balls Sarah card that I'm not sure we've actually seen yet. I think it's in this video. But uh, I try not to look ahead too much because, you know, I want my first impression to be my first impression. So let's move on to Jaya's Fire Nato. Well, they already printed Shark Nato. Might as well do this. So uh, this might have been... I'd say how she died, but I feel like it would say Story Spotlight, but I don't know. Let's read the flavor text. For all their supposed advances, the Phyrexians still aren't fireproof. Yes! God, I love Jaya! So when I was out on the West Coast last uh, weekend, which I guess if that's news, that's where I was, and I was at a thing, and they started playing Despacito, and this like 70-year-old uh, Mexican lady was dancing to it, and so I was like, well, I'll dance too. Jaya is still a slightly even cooler old lady than her. 
and we had a freaking ball, okay? Anyway, this wonderful card is a five cost common red sorcery, so you know that ain't good. It does five damage to target creature or planeswalker scry one. Okay, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's a draft card, it's a sealed card, it's whatever. Next up, oh, here it is. I actually didn't think it was this early. Holy crap. Okay, Sarah Paragon, a mythic, double white. Sarah's in the name, 3 4 creature angel. Buckle up. Flying, and once during each of your turns, you may play a land card from your graveyard, or you may cast a permanent spell with mana value three or less from your graveyard. If you do, it gains when this permanent is put into uh, the graveyard from the battlefield exile and you gain two life. So not free cast. It still has to be there and there's zero benefit to stuffing it there because you're still paying for it and they put a limit on it. Still, this card is bonkers. This is like an insanely good, powerful, almost automatic include in a white deck right here. Just as like a difficult but not that difficult resurrector it's just a little option while you're slamming them in the air three four so if they blow up enough of your stuff they've got to now blow up this or you're going to undo it slowly over time but giving them enough time to breathe this is just masterful card design right here i'm telling you they must not have let mark rosewater anywhere near this set this is like balanced it's sane it's creative there's still some standouts in the state of standard is still crap but if they make the next seven sets after this, this well-designed and this careful, after the next rotation, so late 2023, magic will be back. Right there. Lower the complexity, stop confusing people, do interesting creative stuff, lower the power level, and then still make some obscure stuff for Commander. There you go. Unplayable three-color crap that works great in Eternal. Keep it coming. I don't care. Or just keep making Commander Horizons and just do it twice per year and keep your stupid hands off the standard. How about that? Good financial decision. The set is amazing. This is the best single set I've seen so far since Origins. So next up, <laughs> apparently birds aren't real because Phyrexian Espionage, it's a fake. It's a robot. Don't, don't believe the man. I'm not going to be a part of your system. Woo, this vitamin B is kicking hard. Anyway, it's three cost uh, blue sorcery with uh, kicker one plus a black. Draw two cards. If this spell was kicked, each moment discards a card. It's kind of annoying, but a discard that costs five, go for it. That's probably what it should cost. Getting sick of that one and two crap, getting even more sick of the three stuff that hits double. But yes, that's what black does. Um, yeah, it also it blows up what you have left then, and now it can also blow up enchantments in mono. And it has OP Planeswalkers. Just like every employee at Hot Topic, I think they need to calm down on black a little bit. Next up, Runic Shot. It's a one-cost white uh, sorcery with kicker one blue. Destroy target tapped creature. Nice for one. Sorcery speed, I like that. Good limit, good card. Uh, if the spell was kicked, scry two. Ooh. I thought if it was kicked, it would speed it up to instant speed, but uh, I kind of like that better, actually. This is a really good card. We needed more, like, instant speed tap to attack stuff, but it just almost by default has to cost two, so I actually like the optionality here. And then they didn't completely ruin draft by making this a common. So uh, next up, Bog Badger! Ah, yes, the cousin of the Wall Weasel. So it's a three-cost uh, green 3-3 three, three creature badger with kicker one black. Uh, when Bog Badger enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, creatures you control gain menace until end of turn. Ooh, temporary but devastating. I like it. It doesn't give them much warning, but like if they already had enough in play to just about kill you and you were just going to maybe hopefully block and then turn it around, uh, yeah, you better watch out for cards like this. Because, I mean, it's only four, but like Menace, effectively your blockers are cut in half. So if you can't blow this up or counterspell it or stop the army, you've already failed. So, I mean, I don't think that stuff that, that gives you this short of time to react is automatically bad. It's just good as long as they keep it in check. They keep it within reason. Like I said, this set design is amazing. Next up, Lagomos, Hand of Hatred. Oh, they've got a, a visitor from uh, Rakdos. Couldn't think of the name for a second there. Well, the Pimp Hand is strong with this one because it's a three-cost black red 1-3 legendary creature human shaman. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 2-1 red elemental creature token. Nice. With Trample and Haste, even nicer. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. I figured for that amount of mana and the free trigger, you would have to get rid of it. And then uh, tap, search your library for a card, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Activate only if five or more creatures died this turn. What a lovely consolation prize if they blew everything to hell, but somehow left him. So a throwaway creature that's pretty powerful, but it, it doesn't stick around and build up to, like, unbelievably out of control over time. I'm telling you, I, I'm actually excited to draft this set. Next up, Runeveld Hordemaster. It's a two-cost red, 1-1 one, one Goblin Warrior, and other goblins you control get plus one, plus one. I hate it. And when it or another goblin you uh, control dies, exile the top card of your library. If it's a goblin creature card, you may cast that card until end of 
your next turn. Eh, okay. I mean, yeah, goblin decks probably have about three mana at any given time, tops, so uh, might as well extend it next turn, but uh, you finally kill the goblins, you replace them, and then this is a lightning rod, but he's only a 1-1, because he doesn't even boost himself, but you'd want to get rid of this, but he's only a 1-1. Do you want to get rid of the 3-1 instead? You know, it's kind of balanced, but red rush goblins typically aren't, so I'm not going to say this is like a good card or that there's anything good about it, but it by itself looks almost tame. Next up, Wing Mantle Chaplain. It's a 0-3 for 4. A human Cleric with Defender. Interesting. When it enters battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white bird creature token with flying for each creature with Defender you control. Really? And then whenever another creature with Defender enters battlefield under your control, create another 1-1 one, one white bird creature token with flying. I don't think you're going to win that way, but it's kind of funny. I've got to see this all Defender, all wall deck. I, I just, I, I got to see if it's any good. I think no, but I've got to see it. I mean, it would be white-blue. Maybe you can do something else with that. I've seen some good white-blue cards. So uh, next up, Vodalian, Mind Singer. It's a three-cost double-blue 2-2 two -two Merfolk Wizard. That looks like a goblin and a dinosaur, but oh, they're on top. Okay, I just got that. It's been a long day. So it has Kicker, one generic plus one red, and or, so you can do zero, one, or two Kickers, but the other one has to be one generic and one green. So I've only seen this on one other card, but it's interesting. Uh, Vodalian Mind Singer enters battlefield with two 1-1 one -one counters on it for each time it was kicked. So this thing legit could come out pretty big, but it would cost you seven. So it wouldn't really be that big. It just kind of scales. It's kind of a little bit more fair than uh, level up because you can't do it over time. You got to pay for it all at once. It, it just makes the card good early game and then usable late game, you know? Although 2-2 two -two for three, I don't know if good would be it, but let's see what it does. So... Uh, when it enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature with power less than its power. Oh, okay. For as long as you control it. That is insanely good, and that is going directly into one of my decks. Just realized my mono blue kidnapper deck, probably 90% of it cycled out, and I don't run the other colors. Um, I might be able to splash some duels just to get this done, though. This is, like, that good of a card. I mean, this is... It's not quite Mind Flayer for five when you're paying five. And it's not very useful at all for three, but... Oh, I don't know. Here's the problem. Passive boost, clone it. There you go. Boost all Merfolk, clone it. Now you've got a problem. Hard to set up, but that would be the best use of it. Next up, here we go. I'm going to make this the last card because, dang. This is the legendary, literally, Lotus that they talked about. Mark said there's going to be another Lotus, and you know they were going to go hard. So it's a five drop. Uh, it is legendary, so you can only have one. And Timeless Lotus enters the battlefield tapped. I don't know why I said that so dramatically. It enters the battlefield tapped. Okay. So if you tap it, you can add one of each color. That's five mana. Wow, this is powerful without being, like, game-breaking. I mean, okay, outside of standard, I'm sure you could, like, drop this in for free. I'm a little worried about that. But not really because I don't play other formats that much. I mean, I could estimate this being between 5 and 50 bucks, just depending upon how much it takes off, you know? If you can free cast this with some other cheap card and then just wait a turn, you've got 5 additional mana for the rest of the game. That is crazy. Now, the, the colors that don't match your deck, you're just gonna have to feed them into generic, but... That's fine, this is one of the most powerful mana rocks ever printed. Now this is, you know, color locked, obviously, for a um, commander deck, but if you're playing five color, I can't imagine you wouldn't run this, but that alone isn't gonna create enough uh, demand for this, not really. So we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, it's pretty obvious, there's not much to read into this, it just is what it is. It's pretty obvious what it does, and pretty obvious that if you got it out for five, it's good. If you got it out for less than five, it's really good. But you know what else is a really good value? Into the A, I'm 20 to 95% off. Go check that out. Link in the description. Use code DESTHREADS. Check out the clearance sale. You got just about four days. I'll see you guys next video.